Mm. Brexit. Let's talk about Brexit for a second. People on Facebook are absolutely freaking out about Brexit. Even the people in Australia, I see people are absolutely freaking out. It's not really going to affect the Australians all that much. My advice with big political changes is always the same. Don't freak out too much. Just work with the changes and get yourself some results. Figure out what you really want to be doing, what you really want to be achieving, and then work with the changes to go get your results. It's as simple as that. If big government decisions are either making you or breaking you, then you're not independent. You're not an independent person. You're relying on the government. You're subordinating to the government. And for the last couple of weeks, I've had all these Snapchats from people in the UK saying, Lewis, what would you vote for? Would you remain? Would you stay? What should I do? Where should I vote? And I told them all the same thing. I don't even vote in Australia. It doesn't even make a difference to me. And if it does matter, it means that you're perhaps not doing things to, the, to your full capability, to your full potential. If a government decision makes a big difference to you, Think about what you're doing and maybe re-strategize, recalibrate, tweak that bad boy. I know that in Australia, interest rates are always a big one. And it depends on who you ask. It depends on who you're asking as to their stance on the matter. People who are in a lot of debt want low interest rates. And so whenever the interest rate's lower, that's good. This is a great thing. The government have got their shit together. They're doing the right thing. Not really, because what about the guy down the street who has $20 million in his bank account? He wants a high interest rate to make more interest, to make more money, right, in his retirement. It's no good or bad, it just depends on what is best for you and what isn't best for you, and you tend to label the whole thing as a good thing. The people with all the debt, they want the interest rates to be lower, and then they thank the government for making the interest rates lower. It doesn't, it's not necessarily good or bad just because you've got a lot of debt. And it's the same thing with Brexit. Some people are going to be negatively affected. Some people are going to be positively affected. And some people, a small percentage of the population, sit right in the middle and they don't really care. They'll figure out whatever the outcome is and they'll tweak and tune and fine tune their strategy and they'll get results no matter the environment. The second thing, traders. I got a lot of Snapchats leading up to Brexit asking me what I was gonna do, how I was gonna play it, and then over last night, I got about maybe 40, 50, how did I play it? What did I do? How much did I make? All this kind of stuff. We send an email out at the start of the month through the, to all the IP students saying, don't trade through Brexit. It's high risk. It's dangerous. You don't really know what's going to happen. It's a 100% it's a gamble that could jump your stop. There could be lack of liquidity and you could lose more than your 1% risk. Even if you have a stop loss put in. Don't trade high leverage instruments during big ticket announcements like that unless you really know what you're doing. I wouldn't even do it. I'm not trading it. I didn't trade it. I didn't make any money or to lose any money from Brexit. Interestingly, we had a heap of students who just overrode that rule, which I su suspect that they would, and made up strategies. They got, went and made up their own strategies to trade Brexit. I recommend doing it on demo to, to try and test and experiment and learn stuff. But to put real money on it is absolutely crazy. It's 100% gambling. It, the funny thing is I had about 20 different people come and say, oh, I've invented this brilliant strategy for Brexit. It's a straddle, so I put an order here and an order here. Whatever way it moves, I'm gonna catch the entry, I'm gonna put my stop loss in the opposite position, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna make money, it's gonna be guaranteed. Some people really actually made money with it. And that's the worst thing that could have happened because now they think that gambling's good. The worst thing to happen is someone when they gamble to go and make a lot of money because then they think that what they did is right and then they'll keep doing it in the future and they, it'll take them longer to learn the lesson that in fact it's not wise long term to be gambling like that. Stick to the strategy, trade the small edge. That's it, that's how you should be trading in my opinion. If I had to take a trade, during Brexit, for Brexit, I wouldn't have straddled, I wouldn't have tried to guess whether they were gonna remain or stay and then try to predict the movement from that. I'm not into that, that's not the way I trade, that's not the way I recommend trading unless you really know what you're doing. I would have gotten on the VIX, I would have gotten on the volatility index. That's the trade of the week, in my opinion, that no one seems to be talking about. Do you think at the start of Brexit week that there was going to be an increased level of volatility in the markets? The VIX indicator is for that, it's to trade volatility. So you don't have to predict what's gonna happen, if it's gonna go up, if it's gonna go down, you don't have to predict that crap, you don't have to create straddles and invent new strategies on the spot and risk your account. You trade the volatility index, you buy into volatility. In a situation like this, you get long on the VIX before the referendum announcement. And it doesn't matter what happens, whether they remain, whether they stay, whether the pound goes up, whether the pound goes down, whether it doesn't matter what happens. If there is increased volatility, 
the VIX index goes up and you profit from it. Now, was that a guaranteed win? Was that a guaranteed profit? Of course not. It's still speculating. It's still speculating and I'm making this analysis in hindsight. I didn't put any money on it because that's not the way I trade. I stick to my plan, I stick to my strategy and I do well from that. I don't need to be going and doing these speculations, these high risk gambles. Trading through Brexit as an inexperienced retail trader on a 400 to one leverage spot FX account to me is crazy. But to the guys who did put in the time and effort and energy and work and traded it wisely and traded it sensibly and made money from it, good work. Have you told the vlog what we're doing today? No, I haven't. Well, you better update them. Um, what are we doing today? Today, we are going to Ryland's fifth birthday party, which is a pirate thing. And the vlog doesn't know who um, Ryland is? Ryland is our nephew. My nephew? Is he my yeah. nephew too? Because I'm with you? Yeah, your Uncle Lewis. Oh my gosh. Your shirt's over there. Is this what I'm wearing? Yeah. Do you have any idea what I'm, how I'm supposed to be looking? Like a pirate. Oh. <laughs> I, well, you got your anchor pants. Yeah. And then wear your big black Ugg boots to look like pirate boots. And then your what white shirt. What boots do pirates wear? Like then... Babe, no, the Ugg boots are going to be hot. I'm going to be sweating like a gypsy. You're going to be cold outside. You're kidding me. What the f*** is this? Eyeshadow. Eyeshadow? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you all to? Um, a five year old birthday party. <laughs> I ride this lift like every day and I never see anyone else in the lift. It has to be the day I'm dressed like a complete imbecile. Hey babe, how you doing? Where's your sword? How's the uh, party going so far? I'm glad you're here. Yeah? Why? <laughs> how many people are here? A lot of kids. Oh. <laughs> you know how good I am with kids, babe. Uh, uh, my beard, oh. how am I supposed to eat with, a, with my big beard on? How do people with real beards eat? What is this? I got soup, cauliflower oh, soup. Sick. And toast for you. Oh, I love you. Do you want it on? Yeah. Okay. It's ridiculously hard to see with one eye. And then this. You wouldn't read about it in a book. On the trip from the house to here, I saw as many people as I could possibly see. Who? Hey. I saw a lady in the lift for one. Hey. And then I went had to get out at Fundy's and um, the budgets were there. Really? <laughs> yeah. Olivia just posted an interview with me and her. Oh. I haven't even watched it yet. Oh, cool. Is that the party? That's the party. Jesus. There's 42 children. 42? 42 kids party. I don't party. even have 42 friends that I would know to invite to a party. Can you show the vlog the cake that we made yesterday? Oh, has it been eaten yet? No. Um, Did you tell them? Robin and Robin's sister Emma made a pirate cake yesterday. Yep, we did. You're very proud of that cake, aren't you? I'm very proud of that cake. <laughs> <laughs> Good time this morning. You think I look pretty today? Yes, I think you look very pretty today. Oh my god, I gosh. I think we should have got best dress award. Definitely. Um, I got food, I got water. I'm not leaving the office for another few hours now. Saturdays and Sundays are the best days to work. If you're really serious about getting good results in any area of life, you gotta work at it on the weekends. You just can't turn off just because it's the weekend, right? Especially if you're still in a regular nine to five job and you've got a business on the side, gotta use your weekends. You've gotta use your weekends. I don't know of anyone who's gone from being in a job to not being in a job, living off their business, who didn't work on the weekends. Um, I'm doing it still. I probably always will. If you don't enjoy working, maybe you're not in the right business. Maybe you're not in the right industry. You're probably doing something that you're 
that you think you should do rather than really what you should be doing. Okay. When did pirates get time to put makeup like on? It helped them with the glare on the sea. They used to put black on and their eyes. How did they use sunglasses? They didn't have sunglasses back then.